I'm glad many of you have turned in your test papers, but some of you have yet not given. Perhaps tonight you can give it. And uh, some of you did not attend uh, all the uh, studies, but uh, we have a relaxed, uh, you know, rules and regulations. So we will give three or four more days more. By Sunday, those who are not done, you can do it by Sunday and give us latest by Sunday. 
those who brought your papers may, they are, you know, the file is there. And those who have not received a, a question paper either in English or Spanish or Malayalam, that question papers also are there in the next file, second file there. So, if you have not been attending the meetings, either you can even share with somebody else's notes or, you know, listening to the cassettes. The only restriction is that you don't consult with others before you write. That's all. So today I don't want to ask questions for the obvious reason. We will go to the study today. We will go to chapter 44. Actually this, uh, while I was meditating on it, uh, my heart was really crying out. I really tell the Lord, Lord, told the Lord, Lord, I don't feel fit to speak about these glorious truths, you know. It's very easy to preach, you know, but to live this. So, I still tremble to speak about these things, and I have been telling the Lord, Lord, I feel unworthy. Shall we close our eyes for a word of prayer? Father, we pray. Let your gracious presence, Lord, fill this place. Everything that we have to learn from thy holy word, Lord, speak to us. We know, Lord, we have been rebellious. So many truths we learned, we have not lived accordingly. I have not lived accordingly. Lord, so many things we decided, we prayed and we told the Lord, I want to do this and that. Lord, we all failed in many ways, Lord. I failed, Lord, in many, many ways, Lord. Forgive us, O oh God. Through thy word, God, teach us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. The first verse, chapter 44. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. What we learned last week was that, <clears throat> These people came to, this brethren came to Jesus, or rather Joseph, which is a type of Jesus. And they all sat with him and they had a, a sumptuous table furnished before them. And they ate at the table with Joseph. And now what, after eating enough, now Joseph commanded, the steward of his house saying, fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry. That's beautiful. When we come to Jesus, we can eat with him at his table. He furnishes the table before us. And not only we can sup with him, afterwards what did Joseph say? On the way also, let them carry all the sacks full and all free. What blessed truth we can learn from this. These people came just as visitors. They didn't come to stay with Joseph. They were only visiting Joseph's house. That's all. These people, those who came just as visitors, if they were able to eat so much, and also they could carry. Remember, that was time when all others were facing mighty famine in that land. So these visitors were able to have so much to eat. So, what we need to understand is that if these visitors are given so much, those who came to visit Joseph's house, they were fed with food so much, and also was given enough food to carry. How much more when we come to live in Joseph's house? When we come to live in the house of God? When we come to live to serve God? These people were given so much food and to carry also, not really knowing Joseph, who Jesus, Joseph was. They did not have a real understanding about Joseph. Without having an understanding of Joseph, still he was feeding them and showing so much of love for them. When we know our, our Joseph, our Jesus, 
how much more he will care for us how much more he will feed us how much more he will let us carry and when we come to live with him that will be much more that these were eating and afterwards they were just going away they didn't come to stay but think about the people who make a decision i want to live in joseph south what is joseph south house of god and living for the house of god as david says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever this one thing i desire and i seek after to behold the beauty of the lord and to enquire in his temple this is the blessedness of serving god what a privilege to live with him in the house of god and serve him that is why we read in mark's gospel that uh, chapter 3 we read that the, he he chose told disciples that they should be with him dear children of god it is a blessed privilege to live in the house of god these people just only came not really knowing exactly what joseph's relationship that he had with him and they were treated so so uh, uh, plentifully our joseph has plenty you know his uh, storehouses are so full he has so much he has so much to give but he is looking for people who are willing to come and stay in joseph's house there is plenty of place in joseph's house in the house of god there is so much of space but how many would like to come to joseph's house and live there we don't need to live with the crumbs that is falling from the table of joseph jesus we know healing is children's bread and joseph have plenty of food that means surely he is the healer divine we will go to the next verse verse 2 and he put uh, and put my cup the silver cup in the sack's mouth of the youngest and his corn money and he did according to the word that joseph had spoken i will continue to read up to verse 6 as soon as the morning was light the men were sent away they and their asses and when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off joseph said unto his steward up follow after the men and when thou dost overtake them say unto them wherefore have you rewarded evil for good is not this it in which my lord drinketh and whereby indeed he divineth you have done evil in so doing and he overtook them and he spake unto them these same words this is very strange now what does joseph do joseph is calling the steward and says now first joseph uh, joseph told the steward the governor told the steward you know what you have to do that youngest boy out of this 11 people you see the youngest boy in his sack secretly you put my silver cup into that sack and tie it and put the money also back there nobody should know about it so the steward did not know why joseph was governor was telling that he implicitly obeyed and he put the silver cup there and sent away then these people he was joseph was perhaps he might have been on the portico or balcony or somewhere and he was looking far away how these brother na going and before leaving the city then calls the same steward now go and catch them and tell them why did you steal my silver cup in this only my lord drinks you have done evil after coming to eat in joseph's the governor's house you have done that go and tell them and catch hold of them and bring the one who has got the silver cup catch him and bring him here when i read that i put myself in that state if i am put in that state i think what strange governor is this man he first told me to put the silver cup there and sent away 
And now he says to me, go and catch him. And tell him, you are a thief. You have stolen the cup. And the one who has got the cup, he has to be a bond servant. He has to be a slave. Come and catch hold of him and bring. I think I will be reluctant to do that. But here, what did the steward do? Implicitly obeyed. Immediately, without asking a question, Sir, why? what are you doing like that? Why are you pestering, troubling all those people, these Hebrew boys? He didn't say anything. Immediately, he went and did as it was told. Now, we all know Joseph is a type of Jesus. There are times what Jesus will ask us to do. It may not make sense. But it, it will work. If we obey, learn to obey. That is why Christ is called the head. Our brain, if we use, we will become really fools. Dear children of God, often we make mistakes in that area. We try to use our common sense. And then we feel it's nothing. It is something wrong. And then we try to judge also. Definitely, if I were in that place, I would be judging in my mind the governor. Dear children of God, you and I, many times we have done that. About our leaders, those who are above us, and those who are, maybe, who are guiding us and leading us, sometimes our senses do not agree. How many times I found it, although I may not have spoken, in my mind I used to think, that does not make sense. How can this be done this way? So and so told me to do this way, that way. And it did not make sense. But it works. I was telling yesterday somebody, when I came to the ministry, thank God God gave me a, a beautiful man of God to train up. The only problem he had, uh, I was stubborn that I don't think I was very much uh, in, uh, really being trained. I wish I had been. Well, first, uh, before, as, when I was a believer, I was a youth leader and do this and that and various other things I organize and bring souls. And um, because I, was, I had a Catholic, um, some attachment, I go to the seminary and bring seminary into the meetings. And so after I came to uh, the, the ministry, one day the pastor told, immediately after the Sunday service, I go and try to catch the souls before they leave and go through the door. The man of God told Thomas, your work is to collect all the hymn books and count it and, and bring it. My mind really rebelled. Although I did it, Lord, I am a nearing 30 years old man and he, this six or seven year old children can do this work. I am doing a great work, going and getting the souls. I don't know why this pastor says like this. Which is more, you, you know, sensible, getting the souls or collecting these hymn books. I had a, like a sea roaring inside, but I did it. Then one day I, in the conventions, they used to ask me to pray in the convent because I you know a little bit of Hindi and all. So and I had a loud voice too. So they used to ask me to pray. And in a cottage meeting, I prayed a small prayer. Then pastor, when I came back home, faith home, he told me, Thomas, still I tell you to pray, you don't need to pray. I didn't understand, what is this? And then one day I went to visiting for with, uh, with him, and then in that family that uh, sister told, I am having this sickness. Then I told sister, I too had this sickness, but the Lord healed me. And the pastor when came home and told, I take you there not to preach. You just learn, you have come, you are going with me to learn. Then I thought, oh Lord, here I am, I cannot speak to a new soul, and I cannot pray in the meeting, and I cannot tell somebody at least a witness how Jesus healed me. Before I came to the ministry, I was better off. But after I came, of course, thank God, God gave me grace to obey him. I knew he was a respectable man of God. I had a great respect for him. So, but I couldn't understand why that. But later on I understood. One truth he was teaching, Thomas, life is more important than ministry. I want you to teach, to learn that first. This going, running around and getting souls is nothing. Your life should be upright. 
should be clean. Often he will ask me, how are your dreams? Are they pure? Are they clean? I used to tremble. I realized, Lord, I have to keep my life clean. This is the, this is the path that God has brought me. This is not a, an ordinary ministry. I thought before coming to the ministry, oh, getting souls and people receiving the Holy Spirit and great things, you know, I was thinking about it. But thank God for that man of God. So what I want to say, dear children of God, like this steward obeyed implicitly, it did not work. It, there must be a clash of ideas. That is why some of us still struggle. Perhaps with the elder servants of God. Why did they say that? Why did they speak like that? Why did they act like that? Why they made a decision like that? Dear children of God, I also had the same clash in my heart. Still at times I do have. I cannot say I have become perfect. But I tell you, like this steward without questioning, he implicitly obeyed. Perhaps he may never have understood, even afterwards. He may never have understood, because Bible doesn't say that. Afterwards, the steward underst understood. There are th times, perhaps we may not understand, why our leaders, those who are above us, or God is dealing in different ways. But I tell you, at least when we go to heaven, we will know why God has done that. We of our, our One mistake that you and I do is that, we question in our mind, why I had to do like that? And then we become miserable. And then we become unhappy. And when they come to the house of God, we feel guilty also. So this steward, steward, without asking anything, immediately he did. We, God wants this type of servants of God, who will not use their own brain, but they will use the word of God. Christ becomes the head. Shall we close our eyes and lift up our hands? I have often uh, that problem, I admit. God may, may help us to implicitly obey God and those who are above us. Shall we praise God? Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, O oh God. Hallelujah. Praise ye Jesus. Hallelujah. And coming to this, the seven, we'll come to, we'll read this, um, the next following verses. And from the seventh verse. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words, God forbid that thy servants should do according to this thing. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths, we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondmen. And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and you shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground, and opened every man his sack. And he searched and began at the eldest, and left at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clo uh, clothes and laid at every man his ass and returned to the city. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there. And they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that you have done? What you know that such a man as I can certainly divine? And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak, or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so, but the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father." There is something beautiful here. The silver cup of Joseph. In fact, that is the main subject in this study. Silver, as you know, stands for purity or redemption. So, the very silver color itself shows purity. So, silver cup of jo Joseph means then what? If silver stands for purity, 
silver cup of Joseph means purity of Jesus. Not ordinary purity. The purity of Jesus. That is, so to say, extreme purity. So, Joseph told, this, my silver cup, should be placed in the sack of the youngest person. Verse 2 says, put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest. So, silver cup of Joseph was put in the youngest person's sack. And then, what does Joseph say here? In the 17th verse, somebody may read the 17th verse. You will get you up in peace unto your father. See, dear children of God, I invite your attention now to this. Joseph says, the one in whose sack this cup is found, he only can be my servant. Others cannot be my servants. Others, all of you, you can go away. You all can go away. I want the one who has got silver cup, he will be my servant. Others all may, they all want, in fact, they all wanted to come. They all told, we all will come. Joseph says, no, 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 others don't need to come to my house. It, to Joseph's house, others don't need to come. But the person who has got the silver cup, he will be my servant. This is a great truth, a trembling truth for you and for me. Dear child of God, God is very concerned. Not ordinary cup. He was very strict to put his own cup, the very silver cup, into the sack. That sack stands for life. So Benjamin's sack, it was found. Benjamin's life, it was found. Benjamin, that the youngest, Joseph did not say, put in Benjamin's sack. What Joseph told was, put in the sack's mouth of the youngest person. Youngest stands for the smallest, the humblest, the lowliest, the most gentle, the most meek person, smallest person. If you think you are a big person, your sack will be empty. There will be no silver cup there. Our Joseph wants to put the silver cup only the person's, the youngest person, the loveliest person. If you think that you got a, you are a big person, you got, you know so much and you are so great, you got so much of abilities, he doesn't want you. One beautiful truth that we find all through this Bible, one beautiful truth you can find. You don't see Benj Benjamin speaking at all. All through, you read it and find, never Benjamin opens his mouth. Such a meek person. These others have been telling, oh, we are true men, and we do, how can we do these things, and we, we, have, we are not spies. Of course, that time Benjamin was not with them. Even this time when Benjamin came, Actually, ben Benjamin was caught. He didn't say anything. What a beautiful lesson for you and me. How many times we open our foul mouth and make so many foolish mistakes. And we, word of God says, study to be quiet. But we seem to study to speak and speak and speak. Those who are speaking like me also, I had to be more careful than you. Sometimes I, I have seen how my sermon goes too far and when I see people are looking at uh, their watch only, I realize how boring it is and still I don't stop sometimes. But here, what we find about Benjamin, you don't see Benjamin speaking at all. Not that we should not speak at all, I don't mean to say that outstanding fact or truth we can learn, the meekest spirit that we can find in him. He was the youngest in the physical sense only. But in the spiritual sense, we should become the smallest. But the problem with you and me, 
is that we want to become greater bigger people we want to become more useful there is nothing wrong to become more useful but pushing for that and uh, then others become more useful than we become so envious see the spirit of john the baptist who was the greatest among all the old testament saints the greatest among all those who are born of women what did he say i must decrease he should increase in fact god should grant the grace that you and i will be able to pray this prayer lord make me smaller make me smaller please make me smaller when we pray for that he people are despising and counting us smaller people and neglecting us we will rejoice over it lord thank you for answering my prayers that will be but we are the other way around so so and so didn't speak to me so and so didn't care for me so and so didn't help me so and so is not grateful to me so what do we think you are we think that we are somebody big isn't it that is why we expect somebody to honor us respect us then we don't have benjamin spirit many people think why they, we don't have the silver cup extreme purity not ordinary purity not some purity we will see in somebody's life no the silver the shining silver cup of joseph he didn't put any other cup his own cup he put the children of god that is what god wants to put in your heart and in my my sack the very purity of jesus but he cannot find as out of 11 people only one was found but i don't know in this modern world whether out of 11 people or 100 people one will be found in that state see saints in the past how they really lived moses when we think about him he is what one reason perhaps one of the greatest reasons he sacrificed so much and gave up so that he may have that in one sense that that silver cup of joseph shall we quickly just read somebody may uh, sister lisa please read 11 hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 25 and 26 By faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect under the recompense of the reward the children of God when we think about what sacrifice Moses made to become small that is amazing he gave up three important things one is that we read he left the great position refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter to be uh, tipped to be the next pharaoh great that great position we read he refused that position people are seeking position how to become now the voting time how people are trying day and night struggling to get a position here this man is just freely offered that position he refused that position and then we find he another thing the pleasures he refused the pleasures of sin the pleasures in egypt were so great it was the world empire all whatever pleasures in the world were available world was available was in that palace egyptian palace and he refused the pleasures now people are seeking for pleasures that is why they they go go so spend so much of money and they go to disneyland and this land and that land and they oh they want to uh, so many other places why they are seeking for pleasures they go very often people go for vacation and and go to some places and come back with flu and tired and fever and worn out and all the pleasures just evaporated here is a man who had all the pleasures available he refused that pleasures and the next we find he refused the treasures in egypt that was the greatest empire this man appears to be a mad man isn't it a man the greatest position in the world was to become the pharaoh he refuses that position and then the pleasures of the world he refuses that and then he refuses the treasures 
how people are struggling to get rich. Here is a man who had the privilege to become the richest man in the world. Treasures of Egypt, all the precious stones and diamonds, everything from all the all over the world. In Egypt it was coming because it was the Egyptian empire. This man refused. Why? He wants to become the smallest person. It may appear in the 20th century to something crazy. But dear children of God, that is why Moses' name has come in the heroes of faith. And he refused three things and then he chose three things. That also people will think it is madness. One is suffer affliction. It's choosing rather to suffer affliction. People normally say, I have enough sufferings. I don't want to choose more sufferings. But here is a man who was choosing sufferings. And then with the people, of, suffering with the people of God. Who are these people of God during that time? Slaves making bricks. And to go with them, join them to suffer. That will be, people will say, it's a crazy thing. And the third, third thing that he, he, he chose was reproach of Christ. He refused to three things. Post, the greatest position in the world the greatest pleasures in the world, the greatest riches or uh, treasures in the world. Then he chose three things to suffer affliction. And, and that too with the people of God, joining a man who is going to be the next to Pharaoh is joining the slaves. A, dis, a, a despised people. And then chose re, a reproach of Christ. Why did he do all those things, dear children of God? He got a glimpse of this. To become the smallest. He had everything to become the greatest man on the earth. Of that time. That man, he gave up all these things and chose three things to become the smallest man. That is wisdom. I don't know when you and I will learn this. If we learn this, what do we get, dear children of God? We get silver cup, so to say, a pure heart. Humility and purity, they go together. The more we are humble, the more we have holiness, purity. Humblest are the purest. Purest are the humblest people. A time is going to come. People are going to be discerned. The one who is a true servant of God and a false servant of God. Here, these people, they all told, we all are coming to. Took all the sacks and found, they tore their oh, clothes and kate. They told, no, we all are coming. And they all went to Joseph. Then Joseph refused. No, no, the one who has got the silver cup, you know, he only will be my servant. You all can go away. I ask you, dear child of God, a question. Are you truly serving God? I have to ask that question to my spirit too. A time is going to come to discern who serve him, who serveth him, and who serveth him not. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. That dear child of God, a time is going to come. You and I are worshipping God. We may be saying that we are serving God. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. See, in that day you shall discern. What will you discern? Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. One day God will open. The steward will ask, the Holy Spirit will ask, open your sack, open your sack, open your life. Why? I want to see whether there is silver cup. No, empty, empty sack. Then you go away. You cannot be in, in Joseph's house. My house is, as the songwriter says, my house is only for the pure. And not ordinary purity. Oh, be holy as I am holy. Let us not forget our great calling. God, today there is a shining silver cup is waiting for you. None of us can boldly say we have. In fact, when this cup was put, 
Benjamin didn't know anything, did he? It was not Benjamin who put the cup there. It is not your ability or my ability. We don't have the silver cup. We don't have one. None of us have got that purity. It is Joseph who put that cup. It is Jesus who can put the extreme purity in our heart. But for that one thing we need, we need to be the youngest. We need to be the lowliest, the smallest. Jesus told, the greatest among you will be the servant of all. Oh, dear children of God, we have a long way to go to have this lowliest. Many of our trials are just because we are not humble enough in the sight of God. In the sight of man, we may be humble people. That will deceive. We can surely show, pretend to be very humble. And many people perhaps may come and tell you, Oh, you are very humble man. Please don't accept that certificate. Till the Lord gives the certificate. And that certificate I think He may give only in heaven. On earth I don't think anybody will. Anybody, anytime the Lord told that you are humble hands up. The Lord may say that you have done this good and uh, you know, you will appreciate so many things. Even the seven churches of Asia, we read in Revelation, you, you, he says, oh, you suffered for me this much and you knew who are the good apostles and, and you have what all patience you have. But is there anywhere written that you have been humble? That quality. God is a wise God. If he says today you are humble, what will happen? You will become proud. Pastor Don used to say that story. You might have heard that. But the, somebody was looking for the humblest man on earth. Finally, somewhere in a corner, the humblest man was found. So he was given the badge, humblest man on earth. And he was having, on, here he was spinning and going around. The next day itself, you are a proud man. You are displaying that. That itself shows you are proud and took it away. Like that, what I want to say, really we should take time to be humble. We read, that verse really touched me. When the time came, we read about Jesus. He set his face towards Jerusalem. What for? To be rejected, to be despised, to be humiliated. He was he set his face towards Jerusalem. He was longing to be rejected, to be despised, to be reproached, to be humiliated. That's what we found about Moses in one sense. He chose to be humiliated. He chose to suffer reproach for Christ. He chose to, to, to be with the people of God. He chose it. So Jesus was really choosing. That is why he set his face towards Jerusalem. Have we ever that experience in our life, dear children of God? Oh, I look forward to be rejected, to be despised, to be humiliated. If we come to that state, perhaps a little bit of humility we may have. Then in the light of the word of God, we can see how proud we are. And still we think that we have some purity. Still we think that we are holy. Not at all. I am not telling this to condemn anybody. What I am telling is that there is a great standard. God is so pure. We, we, we read in the word of God, in heaven is not pure in the sight of God. Even the stars in the sky, in Job we read, the stars are not pure. So dear child of God, what is your purity? What is my purity? It is far short of Joseph's purity or Jesus' purity. What we need is that we may become the smallest. Lord, grant me the grace. When I am being rejected, I may rejoice rather than to be. When we are a natural man, when we are accepted, when we are honored, when we are exalted, we rejoice. If we look forward to be to be honored and respected and exalted, perhaps at least to some extent we have the spirit of Lucifer. Lucifer also wanted to be exalted and honored and become great, didn't he? 
But the spirit of Christ is not that. Spirit of Christ look forward to be humiliated. Some people say, I don't want to be humiliated. But look at the cross. Was it not humiliation? His hands were tied and they all spat upon his face. Spittle, thickly falling and dripping from all over the face. And he couldn't wipe. And nobody came to wipe. None of the disciples came. And blood was oozing out and mixed with all the spittle. Not one person. Not one time. At least twice it is written. Not he or they. It's written. They spat on his face. You just imagine. And in that state he was you know, afflicted and crucified near a market square where people all could see. Was it not humiliation? If your master has been humiliated. Are we not supposed to go through that path? When we go through that path, if we become sad, is it not because of our pride? If we rejoice in that, that is real spirit of Christ. And then we will find the silver cup in that sack. Joseph, uh, Benjamin did not know anything about it. And when he opened only, he found they are, we, we find um, uh, various things happening, but we don't see, if jo, um, particularly Benjamin was um, in any way disturbed about it. Others seem to have been disturbed. Anyway, what this, there, are, there are greater riches in becoming the smallest. And there should be great longing in our heart, Lord, make me smaller, make me smaller. How can I become smaller? There should be a real longing in that. Thank God, St. Paul. He got a revelation about it. And perhaps that may be the reason now we all consider St. Paul to be the, perhaps the greatest saint ever lived. I may be wrong. Anyway, that is the impression generally people have. We can leave it to God to decide who is the greatest in the sight of God. But... What we find about uh, him, please read. He says, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8. It says, 3, Ephesians 3, 8. From this we find uh, he got a wonderful revelation. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. He, he says, unto me who am, he doesn't say I am, I am the least. What, what, in English language there doesn't seem to be any word for that like. I am less than the least of all saints. This he was not telling just for the sake of telling. God gave that revelation. Who will be willing to take the place of Paul today? Want to become not the least, less than the least of all saints. Then it's interesting to read, unto me who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given? What was the grace given? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. What he got? God revealed him the unsearchable riches of Christ. Not ordinary things. The man who considered himself the least of, less than the least is this grace given. In connecting with the Bible study, with your permission, shall I put it this way? Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this, this silver cup given? Instead of saying, is this grace given? This silver cup is given. And what is that? Through that, the unsearchable riches of Christ is revealed to him. Earlier, I hope you will remember that when the steward went to, went to these brethren, and asked, is, he told, is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? We will only take the spiritual meaning. Through this cup only, he was, silver cup, 
this governor was divining. Dividing means is uh, knowing the, sec uh, the uh, revealed, revealing secrets uh, hidden. That is, in the olden days there are some like occults and all through that some cup and things, you know, through which there is a divination or get to know some future secrets and all. That is the heathen way and the Egyptian way. But what I am telling the spiritually speaking, through this silver cup only, divination or, or divining or secrets are being revealed. Hidden secrets of Christ through this cup. So, the steward says, through this cup indeed, Joseph is divining. Or, through this cup only, hidden mysteries are being revealed. I hope now you understand what I try to uh, get at. When we have silver cup in our heart, when our heart is pure, in that pure heart only hidden revelation, hidden mysteries God wanted to reveal. And that is what Paul says, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles unsearchable riches of Christ. Obviously Paul had a pure heart. Please read. He himself gives his confession about that. That you can read in First Timothy, sorry, Second Timothy chapter one verse three. Second Timothy one three. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. I serve God with a pure conscience. What a blessed testimony! He was serving God with a pure heart. Yes. He was less than the least of all, so he had, to, so to say, he had the silver cup in his sack. Is this grace given that I may preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? In other words, dear children of God, when we are willing to come down, humble ourselves to the dust, and willing to become the smallest, rather say, smaller than the smallest, then he gives the silver cup of pure heart. Most of our irritations, envy, or anger, or various other stubbornness, rebellion, all when we just go search the root, we will find pride. Although we realize that we don't often we don't seem to do anything about it. Whether in your family you get, you know, sometimes a clash, problems and heated uh, exchanges and arguments. When we look, the bottom line, the inner, most part of that we see, our pride is racing its hood like a snake. We really, what I want to say, dear children of God, particularly in this study, the next three days of fasting prayers, we should really seek. Oh God, show me how proud I am. Lord, how unsanctified person I am. There are so many unsanctified areas of in your life and in my life. And unless we are really um, willing to come down, He cannot do anything in our life. So, coming back to this, again, as when it was told that whoever has got the silver cup, he should be my servant. Um, read the ninth verse, 44, 9. With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondmen. So, with whomsoever of thy servants it be found, let him die. That spiritually, that is beautifully that will take place. The person who has got the silver cup, he must, his old man should die. His old nature must die. With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both, both rather let him die. We will be able to die to our old life, 
old nature and a death will take place when there is silver cup there we don't want to die to our old nature character whether anger or envy or frustration or this and that we don't want to die because there is no silver cup tonight holy spirit is plead, pleading with you and with me ask lord i want that silver cup in my life in my sack and then um afterwards when the st steward started searching there is something interesting about searching the 12th verse please read and he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest and the cup was found in benjamin's sack search started with the eldest obviously you know if there are 11 sacks the first one i try to uh, check is the one that i most suspect if i so if there are there are 11 sacks out of that if i am start i am starting with the one i open first that may be the one i most expect that cup the stolen matter to be there isn't it that might be the reason starting with the perhaps the eldest man might have stolen it but it was not that way started with the eldest so we also sometimes make the same mistake sometimes we think the silver cup the holy life is uh, possible or available to the people the older oldest people or those who are most experienced those who are many years in spiritual life or perhaps in age those who are very old i tell you often it can be the other way around sometimes the oldest people might, might might have been most unsanctified people some sometimes the people whom we think that they are most experienced and they are they know more than anybody else they may have an empty sack perhaps the older people may be more unholy than younger people i'm not telling you generally like that but sometimes it can be therefore as i often say grace does not come uh, no holiness does not come by age it comes by grace there is another interesting verse that also ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 6 so what i wanted to say um, we should not always take because people those who are who have got more experience older in spiritual life older as a believer or a worker or knowing more or grown in age because of that they will have the silver cup of purity it may not be 96 ezekiel slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary see, then uh -uh. they began at the ancient men which were before the house see slay utterly first whom to uh, to slay first old then only young then only both maids then only little children so start with the old sometimes uh, old older people can be more unholy if we are not because this age if i am if i say i am 80 or 90 years old that means my body is 90 years old mind can be 16 years old boy all depending upon how we exercise mind in the grace of god here says slay utterly old then young then maids and little children and women and then they began at the ancient men see start with the oldest person so in no way we can think as far as holiness is concerned not by age not according to the years in our christian life or spiritual life or ministry or in the church membership no when we really want to be really humble then god will help us and another truth that we find this after in joseph's um, joseph uh, steward put this silver cup in benjamin sack they could not go far away from joseph you know before they read again that verse the verse verse 4 
And when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men. And when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? So when they were gone out of the city and not yet far off, then Joseph says, Bring them back. So if you got a silver cup in your life, even if you want to go away from Joseph, you won't go far away. Before that, Joseph will call, bring you back. If we really love purity of life, we just cannot go away from Joseph. Although we may try to go away, he will call us back. No, my son, you cannot go far away. But if there is no silver cup, you can go far, far, far away. It's only in a restricted sense I am telling. I don't forget the fact, not only Benjamin, even the other brethren were there too. We may take it that way. If there is holy purity in our life, even if the others also with us, also can come back to the Lord. And Benjamin is called, what is the meaning of Benjamin? Son of my right hand. So who can become son of right hand for God? Only the smallest. If we become the smallest people, less than the least, such people only he, God wants to make the son of my right hand. If you become, you try to become a great man, a big man or a leader, he doesn't want you. He doesn't want me. If you, if you and I want to become the smallest person, then that's, we can become the son of his son or daughter, whatever it may be, can be the son of the right hand. Do you want to become really son of his right hand? In fact, the right hand of the father, Jesus sat. He humbled himself, even became a born servant. Dear children of God, what a great high calling it is. What a great life that God has called us to. Why should we mess up our life? Why not we seek, oh God, this great standard is written in thy holy word. I want to live this life. Unless we know we are far away, we may never decide to come closer. Unless I really feel I am hungry, I may not feel like eating. Unless I know I am sick, I won't pray for healing. Unless we know how unholy and how, um, um, how uh, uh, proud we are, we may never seek the face of God. Again, I want to say, God has to bring you and me to a state where we love to be rejected. We love to be despised by others. Not that we unwisely or foolishly or by making by mistake, uh, um, we are humiliated. I'm, I don't mean to say that way. For the sake of Christ, for the cause of the kingdom of God, for the glory of God, I mean to say. And in that, when we look forward to that, dear children of God, there is a great joy. I am really amazed to see that verse. Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. He knew there he was going to be crucified. He knew he was going to be rejected. He knew that he was going to suffer there. He knew that they are going to humiliate him. But he looked forward to that. Is there anybody here? I don't want to, you to raise the hand. Could you really come to a state, oh, my heart really look forward to be humiliated, to be rejected for the sake of Christ, for the kingdom of God. I tell you, out of this Christendom, if just few people, just handful of people are found like that, this whole world can be changed. Such people only can change the world. Before closing, one more point I want to mention. One is that, uh, please read again verse 5. Uh, Genesis 44, 5. Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing. So this is the cup in which my Lord is drinking. Joseph is drinking. He doesn't drink in any ordinary cup. He drinks in this particular silver cup. Not any silver cup. There is a particular silver cup. In that only he can drink. On the cross, Jesus cried, I thirst. He's still thirsting for that. He's thirsting to see purity in our life. That thirst is not for water. That thirst is for a, with an 
higher noble purpose although physically it may appear like that but the spiritual meaning he is thirsting for it in this cup only he can drink if this cup is not found still he will continue to be thirsty if our joseph does not find this cup in your life and in my life he will be still thirsting for it because in this cup only he can drink should we not ask should we not have that very thirst in our heart blessed are they which hunger and thirst for righteousness this thirst should be there create in me a clean heart o lord renew a right spirit within me blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god keep thyself pure in this cup our joseph drinks he cannot drink in any other cup the lord is asking my child our joseph is saying i want to put my silver cup in your sack we are you willing to become the smallest the humblest the lowliest the meekest even when you are un- un- unrighteously you are chastised punished are you willing to take it quietly silently joyfully are you willing looking forward to be humiliated for the sake of christ looking forward to be rejected how often dear children of god we really try to push forward in the material world also there is nothing wrong to become rich but long to become rich there is a great sin longing for that if riches increase word of god says don't set your heart in that how many are like moses giving up the greatest possession giving up the greatest pleasures the world could offer giving up the greatest treasures the world could offer and then choose to suffer and choose to be with the slaves and choose to have the reproach of christ why did he do that he wants to be the humblest and the silver cup may be found unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this silver cup given or this grace given that i may preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ dear children of god there are unsearchable riches of christ shall we all stand up as the singers come to sing and with a great low with a sincere heart let us really pray lord i really want the silver cup tonight lord i want the silver cup tonight in my sack you cannot put it shall we all stand up we cannot put it there and we we don't have a silver cup but it is joseph who does and even when joseph put it even benjamin did it know at all about it later on only he realized that the children of god he is well able to put that ask the lord grace may the lord grant the grace tonight if jesus comes or our sack will be open he will find the silver cup in our hearts
singers will continue to sing let us before we close take this time really to dedicate our life lord i realize there is no silver cup in me all the sacks appeared the same outside nobody could think this cup was not bulging out or anything if that is so immediately uh, the steward would have only gone to that we all may appear very good now they will come god will ask open your life let me see whether there is silver cup in you and we'll say others only those who have got silver cup can remain in my house others all you can go away you don't need to be here that i don't want to happen to me to be found not to have the silver cup as the singers are continuing to sing may i request i don't want to make an altar call because i know none of us can boldly say we have the extreme purity may i may i ask all of you to just come and stand in front and really ask the lord lord tonight graciously put the silver cup into my heart i don't have one lord that is what lord in which you drink that is what lord should be my thirst in that only you divine o oh god through that only the mystery is uh, through a holy heart pure heart only lord mystery can be revealed please make me less than the least of all saints shall we do that
before we close at least one or two minutes antes de cerrar aunque sea uno o dos minutos shall we cry to the lord vamos a clamar al señor lord i realize my sack is empty señor me doy cuenta que mi saco está vacío you only can put silver cup into my sack solamente tú puedes poner la copa de plata en mi saco i admit i don't have one admito que yo no tengo una make me less than the least of all saints hazme el menor que el menor de los santos just one or two minutes shall we really cry for the silver cup minutos, vamos a realmente a clamar por la copa de plata aleluya oh god aleluya aleluya broken and a contrite heart lord i come to you señor con un corazón quebrantado yo vengo a ti we realize lord we are empty in your presence nos damos cuenta señor que estamos vacíos en tu presencia you have been bearing with our terrible pride has estado tú cargando con nuestra terrible nuestro terrible orgullo and so filthy lord and ugly we are in your sight y tan feos que somos y tan inmundos lord we desperately need y te necesitamos desesperadamente the very purity of jesus la misma pureza de jesus the very humility of jesus la misma humildad de jesus Lord take away anything that is Lord against purity. Señor quita todo aquello que es contra pureza. Lord take away everything that is against your humility. Señor quita todo aquello que es contra tu humildad. Lord we open our sacks before you. Señor abrimos nuestros sacos delante de ti. We open our lives before you. Abrimos nuestras vidas delante de ti. Please put your very silver cup Señor, por favor, pon tonight. tu misma copa de plata en nuestros sacos hoy. Please put your silver cup, Lord. Por favor, pon tu copa de plata. Señor. Please put your silver cup, por Lord. Por favor, pon tu copa de plata. Please put the silver cup por in favor, our heart, oh God. Plata en nuestro corazón. Give us the pure heart, oh God. Dame tu corazón puro, Señor. Please give us the pure heart, oh God. Hallelujah 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 Please make us humble oh God Haznos humildes Señor Give us a revelation of your humility oh God Danos una revelación de tu humildad Señor Thank you Lord for thy holy word Gracias Señor por tu palabra santa One day Lord when you come, when we come to your presence Un día Señor cuando vengamos a tu presencia No no for should be Lord send away saying that you don't have the silver cup. Ninguno de nosotros tiene que ser enviado apartado que diciendo que no tenemos Make la copa everyone, de plata. Everyone a Benjamin. Que haz cada uno un Benjamín. Help us to be the son of your right hand. Ayúdanos a ser el hijo de tu mano derecha. Help us to see Lord that 
cup, Lord, the very silver cup in our heart. Ayúdanos, Señor, a ver la misma copa de plata en nuestro corazón. So that we could be your eternal born servants. Para que podamos ser tus siervos et eternamente. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. Gracias, Señor, por ayudarnos. In Jesus' precious name. En el nombre precioso de Jesús. Amén. Now may the peace of God that passeth all understanding rest and abide with us all. Now and until the Lord returns in glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.